Oh, hi all. Welcome back to the, uh, well, basically the workshop tonight. I think in the previous videos I've mentioned about um, rebuilding a case DEX, which is the European version of the case D, Model D. It's a 19 late uh, no, I think it's wartime, so it's 1945-46 model. Um, my friend and I have been uh, rebuilding some of the gearbox today. And if we move over, we can see we've got some gears. So, uh, there's your differential in the back there, that big old fella. Massive compared to the model... John Deere Model B's that we've been on with. Um, there's your sliding shaft, gears. So um, basically when you move your gear stick, you slide in one of these gears, etc. And there's your, um, your main shaft down in the bottom here. Um, in the bottom. So if you put it into a gear, I think that will have put it into top. Possibly, yeah. And then if we move that one out, and I think if we move that one across there, it actually goes into reverse. So, yeah. So, yeah, so that's that. Um, obviously, unlike the John Deere's, the drive into these gearboxes on the cases coming from the front, because it's uh, the engine's out here. Um, and so you have a set of bevel gears there, helical cut bevel gears. Um, which you have to set up to get the heel and heel and backlash correct. So yeah, we put all brand new get, um, bearings in it because this tractor was literally a um, hedgeback fine tractor. Well, it wasn't a fine tractor. It was just we know of the tractor. It was laid in a hedgeback. All the gears, the bearings, sorry, had um, corroded badly where they'd been stood over the years. And in fact, on this, on the main um, diff gear, if we just get it so it actually turns over, it comes round. You can see where the um, the main diff gear had been stood at the bottom of the gearbox with a bit of water in, and uh, the gears had corroded. In fact, you can see it there as well. But where they were stood in the water, nice shiny gears. Yeah, so there you go. Out on here, this would be where the pulley would, well, where the pulley will fix. So that's to go on. And those little stubby outlet, uh, stubby spline gears there. Um, and as you can tell, I'm going over. They are for the brakes on these tractors. These uh, cases news uh, a disc brake and a ramp. A, ramp, a ball bearing type ramp system where um, this, the, when you apply the brakes you're applying pressure and the, the, there's a ramp shaped piece inside that ramps up over these balls and which um, therefore makes the discs, uh, um, nips the discs. So yeah, yeah. So that was that. Um, of course the case decks uh, it's like the model John Deere Model D. It is actually chain driven. So um, in the bottom of the gearbox, you have uh, I don't know if we can see them very well, but some sprockets there and some big old heavy chains that go onto these big sprockets here, which are attached to the um, either half shaft. The little gear there is the PTO gear. Um, yeah. So. Now huh, we were meant to have the trumpets, the rear axle sections fitted today, but um, we've had a bit of a problem. If I swing this light round, um, well, if I first start off, there, there's the PTO shaft for the case, somewhat longer than a John Deere B one. <coughs> uh, there's a half shaft. Um, big old heavy half shaft there. Uh, there's the um, there's the trumpet parts of the axles. 
if you can imagine obviously this this end is the case side the gearbox side and that's the output side and the hub would be on there now we have a bit had a bit of bother today um, now I don't know if case men have um, come across the same problem but you no longer that I can find anyway you no longer seem to be able to get this double lipped um, outer felt seal um, and I can't get an, a mo modern equivalent seal I'll just get the torch a minute and so I got my um, bearing man to look into it for me and he came up with uh, this single lipped seal it's a leather seal inside a metal case nice quality seal um, it doesn't isn't double lipped but I think because the tractor obviously isn't going to go into full mainstream work again it won't matter um, so I think this will be quite adequate to help keep the um, the lubricants in the correct place but the problem with them is and this is the rub is that um, they won't uh, let me just get this torch to the problem with them is is that they don't uh, they're a bit tight they run on this the run the seal runs in this area here and it's a bit tight um, on the original machining and that, that the, the, the thing fits the housing all right this piece fits this piece perfectly but the inner piece where the seal is is very tight on the um, on here um, and so what to do um, I mean it did go on I, I did try one and it, and it did go on but uh, extremely tight so what I ended up doing was sticking that great lump of um, iron <laughs> forged iron into the uh, into the lathe and um, there you have what you have pretty impressive really <laughs> all that iron in a four and a half inch boxford lathe um, and so what I've done best that I can just put torture is I've machined this surface down um, to give tolerance for that seal um, just at the moment giving um, giving it a very light final cut here so if we set it off you should see it run so I've got it fixed in the four jaw truck chuck um, had a hell of a job to keep them in but um, eventually I got it so it would stop right um, as you can see there the uh, just giving it the lightest of cuts now and then I'm using my steady at the back running on the outer bearing surface Yeah, I was quite impressed really, getting that great lump of iron in there. I know I did um, a John Deere B half shaft, in, I built a bit of John Deere B half shaft up, and it was a fairly heavy lump of iron. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. You could just see how out of round it is in the middle. <laughs> but yet, both ends are true as a die. Because it's a casting, obviously it's just so far out around. You can see it there, absolutely oscillated. It's probably going faster there than it'll ever do when it's on the tractor. I mean, it tells me on the thing I'm doing 16 RPM, 16 revs a minute. Well, I shouldn't think it'll go much faster when it's sat on the tractor. Um, what I'll do is, um, once this is cut to there, I'll then just give this a nice finish with a piece of emery cloth just to get a nice uh, smooth finish and then I'll just put a slight taper on this leading edge so that the seal drops on. <coughs> so yeah, so we'll just see this to the end. <coughs> Excuse me, there we go. Just back it off. What a 
a satisfying job that is. I was really pleased with that. Took some getting right because um, the problem is, is it's the whole thing's on its limits um, for the steady at this end and for the clearances under here. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah. So you case men, if you're interested, I will put this case D on the um, on the heading of this video if you're interested. Um, yeah, if you can't get that that seal again, um, there, there's a decent replacement. Um, now there is a number on there. Uh, there you go. It's a it's a, it's a new modern seal that of all it's leather. It's modern. It's 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 a good number that. So yeah yeah. So just a quick look for the John Deere boys. In here, we've got the hood on the tractor. Um, just ready to get the pipe work done for the fuel system. Um, yeah, so we've had one little disaster though. <laughs> right disaster, in fact. I decided to, um, before I put the hood on, I thought I'll fill it up with water and antifreeze, which is in that container there. And um, left it overnight, and guess what? Huh, I've got a blooming water leak. Down in the far corner on the radiator, just over the other side. I wouldn't care, we pressure tested the radiator, couldn't get anything out of it, no bubbles or nothing, but anyway, it is definitely got a leak on it. So, I'm going to have to take, the, I can't believe I'm saying this, I'm going to have to take the radiator out and um, see what's going on and take it to bits it's uh, somewhat annoying um, there you go these things are sent to try us I uh, put the first sticker on the service sticker for the, um, the air filter um, as I think I've said in the past I like to use the vinyl stickers they, they're much more quality so yeah, so that's on. Um, but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to get all the the pipe work rigged up for the for the fuel system. So that's ready, and then I'll lift the bonnet off, the hood off. Um, I've got a little bit of adjustment to do to the exhaust. It just seems to be running a bit tight in here. I think I can get a bit of movement on the exhaust to move it forward. Um, hopefully I can, but uh, obviously I've got this radiator problem to sort out. Yeah, so that's the fresh cap painted up for the top of the steering gear. Um, I think I, in a video I've just recently posted, I was talking about the wiring. Um, so that's how I've got it set. I think that's correct. I mean, if any of you guys have any different views on that setup of wiring, uh, the wiring obviously is correct to the generator, but it's it's the actual setup of how the wires are laid in, because um, there does seem to be co some conflict of how they they were set, how those wires were fed to that generator. Um, I've seen several different versions of how they were done. Um, so that's how I've set it. But possibly some of you guys that have these electric start model Bs, you might be able to um, shed some light on that. If you can, please do. I'm very interested to hear that. Um, obviously, the wire, there's a clip missing up in here. I've got a clip to find. The wire will hide away up in there. Um, there's a chap commented about using a bit of baler belting on there. Good idea. Like that idea a lot, so that's what I might do. Put a bit of um, the old round baler belting on here just to help keep any vibration out of the battery. Good idea that. Thank you very much for that one. So yeah. So um had to be I've had to have been a bit social this uh, Christmas time, so I haven't got that much done. Um I was hoping to have that uh, rear end looked at. But um anyway, I haven't got round to it yet. So anyway, I hope you all had a good Christmas and uh New Year's near upon us, so Hope you have a good New Year's Eve parties or whatever you do. So, see you next year. Okay then. Cheers now. Thank you.
Bye.